Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Chongs. This edition's top stories. Government makes an investment in digital diagnostic equipment at St. Jude's Hospital. New collective agreements are signed between the government and the Police Welfare Association. The contest for Carnival Queen 2019 heightens. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquail. The government of St. Lucia has made an investment in digital diagnostic equipment that is expected to enhance services at the St. Jude's Hospital. More from Fennel Neptune. Patients at the St. Jude Hospital are expected to benefit from an improvement of diagnostic imaging services following the handover of a floor mounted X ray machine. Chairman of the St. Jude Board, Wayne Harrow, says he's confident that the equipment will allow the staff to provide cost effective and high-quality diagnostic service to the people in the south of the island. Today, we will commission an extra machine, top-of-the-line extra machine, best on island. We will be able right now to deliver to our people a higher quality of diagnostic services. We should enable our doctors to diagnose situations and we to dispense the right treatment to our people in the south. We also have the ultrasound machine, which is installed in the ER department, which will assist our ER doctors and nurses in again discharging a higher and better and a quicker quality of service to the patients. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says, she is extremely appreciative of the work undertaken by the staff of St. Jude Hospital, despite the daily challenges. So you at St. Jude, you know of all the, all the new initiatives, all the repairs and all the equipment that you now have at your disposal that of course some of them needed repair, some of them have been lying around for years and these, these, um, these have been repaired and you will be able to utilize this. Now that will save you and the patients, the people that you serve a lot of problems in terms of having to go down to Victoria Hospital and so on. So. We are all very happy to hear of this news this morning. Supervisor of the Radiology Department at the St. Jude Hospital, Chanel St. Louis, expressed gratitude for the X remission and gave assurance that it will put it to good use. As we remain in transit here at the George Odlam Stadium, it became necessary to improve the capability of our x-ray services here and our equipment and the best suited equipment was a floor mounted unit and we would like to thank the government of saint lucia for this timely investment we assure you that a lot of the services that we could not provide we will be able to provide these services here at saint joe's hospital the saint joe's hospital remains committed to providing the best of medical services to its patients. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funa Neptune. Negotiations between the Police Welfare Association, the PWA, and the government negotiating team, the GNT, have concluded with the signing of two collective agreements. The Police Welfare Association and the government negotiating team signed the collective bargaining agreement on May 17, 2019, which according to the PWA President Travis Chico was accepted by members unanimously. The negotiations covered the period April 2016 to March 2022. According to Chairman of the Government Negotiating Team Vern Gill, in an effort to cover the two periods, adjustments were necessary. The broad outline of what is agreed is that the government will pay a lump sum to the members of $1,500 for the period 16 to 19. There will be a 1% increase in salary for the period 2018 to 2019. And for the period 19 to 22, there will be 1% in the first year 19 to 20, 1% in the second year 20 to 21, and 2% in the last year. 21 to 22. President of the Police Welfare Association, Travis Chico, expressed gratitude to the government negotiating team for the effort and to members of the association for their patience. I am very happy that at least members are able to see a shift in the salaries coming in the few days that they would enjoy the benefits given to them and also to secure 
landmark deal where the, 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 the police at this point in terms of part of its national crime strategy that, that the insurances would now be a big part of the police to really boost their morale and confidence as we tackle the issue of crime. The government negotiating team will be continuing negotiations with the other bargaining agents on island. In an effort to improve and sustain student performance in mathematics, a comprehensive revision of the mathematics curriculum is underway. Here's Janelle Norvell. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations is currently reviewing the mathematics curriculum to include trends, issues and the way forward. Ministry of Education's Deputy Chief Education Officer for Instruction, Dawson Ragunanan, explained that following an analysis, it was recognized that the mathematics performance is not what is desired. Consequently, the ministry has begun a review of the potential issues. And as we go through, we recognize that um, the curriculum has been incomplete in a sense. We actually have a curriculum from grade, two, grade K to grade 2. However, there is no formal curriculum from grade 3 up to grade 6. So today we have decided to come together um, because of the fact that, one, we have developed learning standards for the OECS. And out of those learning standards, the math curriculum should come out. It should evolve from the um, learning standards. The Deputy Chief Education Officer for Instruction noted that the development of a mathematics curriculum requires input from a number of stakeholders. A curriculum, according to Raghu Nanan, is done based on the needs of society and must take into account all the various players. It is therefore important that consultations are held with all stakeholders in an effort to ensure that the curriculum adequately meets the needs of learners. Curriculum takes a, a, a long period of time. It doesn't just happen overnight. Um, so w what we're actually looking for is a draft curriculum, after which they would, would need to pilot that curriculum. And based on the pilot and the evaluation, then we would need to come back um, and to actually complete it. Um, also, I want you to recognize also that with the curriculum itself, it, it is going to take a, a, a long period of time. But because we have the lower school primary curriculum already, we're expecting to have a draft maybe by, by August um, 2019 so that we can start working from there. A consultation was held on the 16th of May 2019 at the National Skills Development Conference Room with educators from kindergarten to grade 3, among others. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia is extending its reach into the U.S. market through the introduction of a non-stop American Airlines flight from Chicago. The weekly Saturday service from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport to Huronara International Airport will begin on December 21, 2019. The Minister for Tourism, the Honorable Dominic Fede, says this is American Airlines' continued belief in St. Lucia and its product. The flight is without minimum revenue guarantee, as the government has proven that with the refocused marketing of St. Lucia Tourism Authority, it can build confidence to invest in sustainable getaways. Currently, American Airlines offers a daily morning service into the island from Miami and a weekly service from Charlotte. The Cultural Development Foundation, the CDF, is preparing to spearhead St. Lucia's participation in the upcoming Caribbean Festival of Arts, Garifesta, more from Anisia Antoine. The Cultural Development Foundation held final auditions to select a contingent to represent St. Lucia at the region's premier festival of arts, Carifesta 14. Carifesta is a 10-day multidisciplinary arts and culture festival which occurs every two years and aims to celebrate the spirit, culture and heritage of Caribbean people through expressions of music, visual art, food, literature, folklore, theater, and dance. Director of Training, Promotions, and Development at the CDF, Celeste Burton, stated that Carifesta creates a space for artists to gather and collaborate, which will ensure that there is a lasting benefit for the practitioners themselves and the advancement of the art forms. It's an opportunity for us as a country to showcase our, our talent, to showcase St. Lucia, what we have to offer in terms of arts and culture. Um, it's also an opportunity for our artists, the best 
of St. Lucian artists to get an opportunity to learn because the festival actually is, 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 is a mixture of showcasing and um, workshops and masterclasses where the artists are exposed first of all to some very reputable um, lecturers and persons involved in the arts who do workshops with them and, and they, they learn a lot as well as the opportunity for them to showcase what we have to offer. 25 people will be selected out of the 69 shortlisted candidates who attended the final auditions at the National Cultural Center on Thursday, May 16, 2019. Director of Events, Arts and Production at the CDF, Drina Frederick, explained that the shortlisted candidates also received training and were rewarded a certificate upon completion. What we wanted to do was to provide some sort of training for them in terms of professionalism in the theatre, um, drama, dance, vocals. And what we're doing today is a sort of a training workshop and we'll be selecting the cast that will be part of the contingent to go to Carrie Festa. And so this is, well, you could call it an elimination process, but it's an elimination process of benefits where we saw the need to provide training as well. Carifesta 14 will be hosted by the Government of Trinidad and Tobago from August 16th to August 25th, 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I look back, I knew it was a, a, a full snake. You happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake. This is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we're coming down for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Officials are hailing the recently concluded Inter-District Primary Schools Female Football Tournament as a huge success. District 6 emerged champions when they won two goals to one against District 1 in the final played at the South Plain Field VG on Friday afternoon. Cyrus Sipal is Education Officer for District 1. He told NTN Nightly he was pleased by what he saw during the playing of the competition. Yes, I must say I was very impressed with the skills that I saw um, in a lot of the girls, okay? It definitely tells us that we have talent and what we have to do now is to put in place the um, development program where we can harness these resources and then identify the skills very early and put these girls in a training program where we can develop them to represent St. Lucia or even to develop it as a career. So I need to commend the Football Association for coming up with this program and for understanding that um, they can partner with Ministry of Education and then we can develop the children in a holistic manner. So it's not just simply the academics I always say but it's a holistic development. And then we need to understand also that sports is part of the education system um, with the children. It is not an interruption in the program. I need to say this loud. Mr. Sipa congratulated District 6 on their victory and also commended the other districts for their participation. Preparations are well underway for this Sunday's Independent Sports Fund Day, an event organized as part of the island's recognition of 40 years independence and coordinated by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports in collaboration with the National Sporting Associations which are putting on events. Billed as a fun family sports day, organizers are expecting a number of teams with participants 40 years and over will come out to show their skills 
in the disciplines of netball, basketball, and volleyball at the VFO multipurpose courts. Proceedings are set to get underway from 9.30 in the morning. Organizers of the Sports Funday have planned a site visit for Tuesday, May 21st to ensure logistics for the day are at the anticipated timelines. Two senior officers from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be leaving the island on Wednesday for Dominica to attend a technical meeting ahead of the 2019 Winnet Island Schools Games set to be held in the Nature Island of Dominica. Representing St. Lucia at the meeting will be Director of Sports Patrick Matre and School Sports Coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey. Final arrangements for the Games will be discussed by attending delegates and a determination and confirmation that countries will agree to keep the same five sporting disciplines to be competed as was the case in St. Lucia last year. And if that item on this year's Winter Island Schools Games Technical Meeting in Dominica, we come to the end of your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The contest for Carnival Queen 2019 has heightened following the sashing ceremony held on the weekend. Eight contestants will vie for the title of Carnival Queen 2019. The sashing ceremony of the National Carnival Queen pageant contestants evoked great expectations from the contestants as they left attendees impressed with their showcase. Speaking at the ceremony, Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries for Tuna Bell Rose called for support for the contestants, adding that there needs to be more synergy between similar events. The object is for us as a citizen, as a, as a country, to focus on developing our young people and this is one of the opportunities that our society gives you know, to young people through pageantry. What I would certainly like to see as minister is that this pageantry develops, um, not develops, it's already developing. I think what I want to see is greater synergy between this pageant and also the Miss Universe pageant. I think there are too many events of this nature happening in isolation. We need a clear pathway for the young women and men who decide to go into pageantry so that they know they know if they wish to get to Miss Universe, what it is they have to do, the steps they have to take, and the opportunities that are provided for them to be able to realize that dream of becoming who they want to become on the world stage. Chief Executive Officer of Events St. Lucia, Thomas Leos, highlighted the benefits to the contestants embarking on such a venture. It's really a journey um, over the next several weeks. Um, I think the ladies will learn skills of time management, they will learn how to um, you know, build self-confidence, um, perseverance, how to lose gracefully um, because not everybody will win. But I think the winning for them will be the journey that they would have undertaken towards that day um, where the, the pageant will be held. Up. So it's not so much winning or losing, but it's really that journey, the training that they go through um, on the day in question, how to, how to network um, during the pageant, before and after. I think that would be valuable for young ladies. Head chaperone for the National Carnival Queen pageant, Louise Victor, explained that the contestants have been undergoing vigorous preparations for the pageant. She shared some words of advice with the contestants. Be themselves. It sounds cliche, but it, the judges could always tell, the audience could always tell. And by, by being that, you, it, it's also important to be vulnerable, because by being vulnerable throughout the process, you get to learn and be more emotionally and mentally immersed in the process. And I think that is very, very key, because if, if you are to approach everything just on the surface, um, it doesn't connect as it should. Um, and with pageantry, by somewhat letting the walls down, you're in that space where you can, it's like you're an empty cup and you're being filled and you're filling the cups of your audience. The session ceremony was held on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The pageant is scheduled for the 29th of June 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. I have my mobile, landline, cable TV, and internet service. If I have a problem with any of the services, what should I do? 
Here's what you should do to resolve the problem. First, get and fill out a complaint form and lodge your complaint with the service provider. If after 30 days there is still no solution, you may contact your National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, NTRC. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement, c'est le CGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capositou Nouvelle Arqueo. Présente au Primus Hutchinson. Association qui est responsable pour garder dans l'affaire de police PIA, si il y a un agrément collectif, et puis gagner un gouvernement qui est responsable pour conduire une négociation pour divers représentatifs à service public PIA. Pour couvrir la période de l'année 2016 pour 2020. Chef de la négociation gouvernement, Van Gill, explique qu'il y a un effort pour adresser des périodes. Il est nécessaire pour faire cet arrangement nouveau. Selon M. Gill, pour la période de la gouvernement qui a été available pour ces policiers-là, et qui est d'accord pour accepter, 1500 dollars pour l'année 2016 pour 2019. Là aussi, il y a pour 100 haussements salaires pour 2018 pour 2019. Il y a aussi aussi qui la a un haussement de 1% en 2019 pour 2020, 1% en 2020 pour 2021 et 2% en 2021 pour 2022. Président de l'Association des affaires pour les sites, Travis Chico, remarque que et très plein et puis mon négociation a passé et expressement comme les polices qui a expérimenté le changement neuf en salaire particulièrement comme les membres de l'organisation d'accord en total pour accepter pour poser le salaire ça qui a encore apporté plus de significance à ce politique c'est confiance là qui a vraiment ça là qui a placé à ce police côté yo à présent qui a joué plus effort à bataille yo contre crime un pays avec des gouets assurés qui a commencé à la cabayo. Gagne négociation gouvernement, car il continue les négociations et puis les autres agences à payer. Pays cette lecie, en chemin pour espérer ces bons bénéfices, quand programme travail agricole à Canada, ça c'est ministre qui n'est pas responsable pour faire le travail à cette lecie. On a aussi Vincent King à pays babad présentement, car discuter des gouets programme ça là. Ensemble, et puis les, les, les collègues, li, ça c'est les collègues ministres, c'est ce type de Caraïbes. Là. là aussi, ni les officiers de service qui sont responsables pour le programme de salaire en Caraïbes. Et selon Honorable King, les travailleurs agricoles ont cette aussi. J'ai trouvé trois bénéfices pour le programme. En ces plusieurs années qui j'ai passé depuis le programme de salaire en existence. Monsieur King a vu que parmi ces plusieurs bénéfices qui se travaillent, j'ai trouvé ces habilités pour financer l'éducation de l'école pour augmenter la vie économique de la famille, pour ça plus capable pour adresser la situation de santé et pour adresser une meilleure position pour sauver un petit soucoup proche pour les qualités de situation qu'on s'est levé tête. Le ministre King déclare qu'il est très plein pour renforcer les relations et puis pour comme ça là en Canada, pour ça offrir cette licence, plus meilleure l'occasion pour continuer à prendre l'avantage pour comme là, pour travailler agricole à pays Canada. Pour plus d'années pour venir. Ministre pour l'éducation, on est Dr. Gail Rigobert, déclaré qui, à présent, l'école secondaire choisit pas seulement avancé en affaires technologie, et aussi ni computer qui est très avancé et capable, mais aussi qui est plus avancé dans l'affaire climat, et qui a facilité en place pour assister les étudiants qui ne s'étaient déshabillés. Il fait déclaration à la cérémonie officielle pour ouvrir des chambres neufs à l'école secondaire choisie le 13 mai l'année ici. Selon on a Dr. Rigobert, l'école est aussi capable pour adresser les étudiants qui ont fait blesse pour apprendre et bien pour embrasser l'éducation à diverses façons. Le ministre de l'éducation a remarqué que parmi l'autre, ce que l'école est capable pour offrir, c'est l'habilité pour savoir en façon énergie et aussi la euh, résilience pour les problèmes climat. Et plus toujours, pour aider les étudiants à adresser et suivre l'éducation en ligne de l'étonnement en vocation et affaires techniques. La 
ni aussi plusieurs la caille ni aussi plusieurs autres gros projets à ministère de l'éducation c'est ça c'est bâtiment de l'école secondaire à Mikou et aussi wellness center OK ça c'est de l'autre développement caille pour coup pont en au piaille et community center avec son au piaille blancha et marcas gavi programme pour abattre trois casement climat caille aussi fait possible pour les business et la famille caille trouver assistance finance pour implémenter diverses façons pour résister changement climat ça caille available à bas facilité des finances des adaptations climat hot bank développement cette ici et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle là nous avons au temps pour garder mon cabo une invitation je ne peux pas encore si des conserver la vie les gars pour cette autre nouvelle à coyol à présent mon cabo vieux présenter les merci au pil primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Winds will be blowing from the east near 22 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Weak and stable conditions in the lower atmosphere over the region will cause a few isolated showers over the Lesher Antilles during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 5.38 p.m. and will be low again at 10.11 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 6.45 p.m and will be low again at 11.38 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.